Thanks again for joining me here at But Now Ministry. And today we're going to talk about part 12 of what do you anticipate being obstacles or dangers that would imperil your ministry. And we know being ministers of reconciliation, ambassadors of the grace of God in the dispensation of the grace of God, Ephesians chapter 3, Colossians 1, 25 and 26 and Romans 16, 25, that we are to preach and teach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. And we are to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9. And we know that that's not easy in a world who thinks they're Israel when Israel's fallen, Romans 11, 11, in a world who thinks Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is New Testament when anything before Jesus Christ dying on the cross is Old Testament. In a world when everyone thinks the law and the covenant for Israel is for them, and that would be a downright lie according to the Bible, Exodus 19, Hebrews chapter 8, Jeremiah 31, and Ezekiel 36 confirms it was only given to Israel, and Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 tells us that no one is under the covenant or Israel's promises or getting any of Israel's promises today. We know it is difficult telling people that the gospel of the kingdom in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is different from the gospel of the grace of God in Paul's writings. We know that it's difficult telling people that there are more than one program going on in the Bible, that of Israel and that of the church, the body of Christ, and we cannot mix those two doctrines. They're two separate programs going on in your Bible. One is not plan A, one is not plan B, they are all plan A. We know it's difficult telling people that we are not born again, we are new creatures. We know it's difficult that the commandments of the Lord today has nothing to do with Israel, but all have to do with Paul's writings and his writings alone, 1 Corinthians 14, 37. We understand that we have to study to show ourselves approved unto God, not serve in the children's ministry, not be on time at your so-called church, and not be an usher. Okay, That is not how you show yourself approved unto God in the dispensation of God's grace. And it is difficult telling people and letting people know that we are to rightly divide the word of truth, not correctly handle, not do whatever we want with it, not proof text it, not story tell, not allegorize, and not conflate, but rightly divide the word of truth. And that is where we're at today in part 12. And today we're going to look at the Jew and the Gentile. <clears throat> who is the audience for the gospel? Now, we know there's the gospel of the kingdom. We know there's the gospel of the grace of God. We know there's the gospel of the circumcision. We know there's the gospel of the uncircumcision. We know there's the gospel that was given to Abraham back in Genesis chapter 12. We know there's the everlasting gospel. Okay? And so there's quite a few different gospels. There's quite a few different ways God distributes good news in the gospel to different audiences at different times and different dispensations and we have to understand and know what gospel God is using today in what dispensation and at what time and if you do not know that you will end up in hell you'll be trusting the wrong gospel for your soul salvation and you'll probably even think you can lose your salvation because you're trusting the wrong gospel the wrong, in the wrong dispensation and the wrong doctrine. So you have to make absolutely sure you understand, first of all, your Bible. And you understand the different doctrines in your Bible. And you understand what gospel saves your soul today. And so we go back to the Old Testament doctrine for Israel in Matthew 10. Anything before Jesus Christ dies on the cross is Old Testament. It is not what your pastor is saying every Sunday that, it, that it's New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John before Jesus Christ dies on the cross. That would be a lie on the authority of Hebrews 9, 15 through 17. So, and I have said this often, if churches, so-called churches in America can just get that right, then we're on to something. But they can't because they have an agenda that... Ultimately, if they change their agenda, they would not get paid, okay? And these people don't work for a living. 
they just run ministries and take people's tithes and send their kids to so-called Christian seminaries to learn more about not believing their Bible. Isn't that great how the devil operates? But that is exactly what the devil's doing today. And so we need to be ambassadors. We need to be ministers of God's grace. And we need to tell people the truth, okay? And most likely because you tell the truth, you are going to be their enemies, okay? Ephesians 4.16 makes that very clear. So, even though I tell you the truth, have I become your enemy? And that is, unfortunately, what happens when you tell people the truth. And so, Matthew 10, verse 5, 6, and 7 says, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but rather... Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Romans 15.8 makes it very clear who Jesus is a minister to. Okay, Paul gives us definition of that in the dispensation of the grace of God according to the revelation of the mystery. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. So you know clearly his ministry is not to us because what does Paul say about circumcision and uncircumcision? It means nothing. What does Paul say about Jew and Gentile? It means nothing. So clearly not a ministry to us. And then we also find out that in Romans 15, 16, and 2 Timothy 1, 11, in the dispensation of the grace of God, according to the revelation of the mystery from our Apostle Paul, it says that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. That would be the Apostle Paul, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. In 2 Timothy 1.11, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. And again, notice, Peter, James, and John's names are not in there because Galatians chapter 2, verse 9 says that they are also ministers to the circumcision, not the Gentiles, because Galatians chapter 2, verse 9 tells us that the apostle Paul and Barnabas are ministers to the heathen and to the uncircumcised and hardened ears. So clearly, two different ministries going on in your Bible, and the only way you'll understand that is by believing your Bible, not your pastor, not your scholar, not your Greeker, not your Bible corrector, not your conflator, not your storyteller, or your allegorizer, okay? So get that right. Believe your Bible as it stands. Don't add any words to the verses and don't take away any verses to the ver any words to the verses, okay? And that is important because when you and I and I challenge you with this. Right now there's this big movement called the flat earth movement. Look up the word flat in your Bible, you'll find three verses. Approximately, I think it's three verses, and I'm not looking this up, but you'll find three verses that contain the word flat, okay? And it has nothing to do with the earth, okay? And then when you look up the earth, you'll find quite a few verses with the word earth in it. One containing the word earth, that it's a circle, and find that one. I'm not going to tell you what that verse is. But you will notice that the word flat does not, is not in any verse with the word earth. But yet people claim they have hundreds of verses that the world is flat. But yet they have no Bible to back it up with. Because what they do is, like in Genesis where, the, where it says the world is without form, guarantee you they put the word flat in there when it's not in the verse because that's what people do they'll say well what what's a world without form what's the world without that's void and they add words to the verses that aren't there and they make up their own and then they allegorize it and they conflate it and they story tell and they proof text and they come up with this whole movement which ultimately is heresy which ultimately goes against God's words. And they take the devil's stance. Because anything that goes against the Bible, anything that's not of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
is the Antichrist. Okay? And so, unfortunately, that's the stance people take. They put words that aren't in the verses, and then they believe them. Number two, are we saved into one nation or one body? Genesis 12.2 and Genesis 18.18, 18, again, goes back before the law is given to Israel. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great nation, a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. And so, clearly, Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Now, what about us, the church, the body of Christ? Well, Paul makes it very clear. We're not part of that. 1 Corinthians 12, 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. So in the body of Christ, we have all spiritual blessings, Ephesians 1, 3. All spiritual blessings, not physical, not earthly, but yet the nation Israel will get all the earthly blessings. And so, clearly, we're saved into one body today in the dispensation of grace. And Israel is saved into one nation. Okay? And you need to get that straight because Israel does not get saved until they meet up with their Messiah in the earthly kingdom. They have to endure to the end. Okay? No one's enduring to the end today in the dispensation of God's grace. Okay? We are in a time when the devil is running the world. The Lord Jesus Christ is seated in heavenly places. And we just have to put up with the sin-cursed world, with sin-cursed people, according to the devil's course. That is what we're dealing with today. And there are only two people on the face of the planet, and it's not Baptists, and it's not Methodists. It's saved and unsaved people. Okay? And that is what we're dealing with today. We're not dealing with nation blessing, Israel blessing. Um, if we do good to someone else, we get a blessing. We're not part of any of that. We are not under the law. We are under grace, Romans 6.14. And it's, we are part of a body, not a nation. And that is exactly what God is doing today. And that is what you have to get in your head because no matter what place you go that calls themselves a church, they're going to tell you that they're under that you're under a covenant, that you're under the law, and you have to tithe. Okay. If they don't tell you that, they will go out of business. That's how they run their business. Okay. Like I said, in other messages, none of them have a real job. Okay. And again, you know, most people in the Bible worked, and they did ministry, but not these people. Okay, and so another clue for you is that they're not following their Bible. Okay, and because of that, they are getting paid by people who are ignorant. And what's even scarier is the people that these ignorant people are paying are just as ignorant of the Bible as they are, and so. That is why we have the Benny Hins and the Joyce Myers and the James McDonalds and the John MacArthur's and the Bill Hybels and the Creefo Dollars and the Charles Stanleys and the Tony Evans and on and on they go, right? None of them work for a living. And so that is just another clue that... God is not building a nation. He is building a body. Because if any one of those people, like the 10,000 people that go to Bill Hybels Church, if they actually came to that place and they were taught that Israel's fallen and they were taught that God did perfectly preserve his word, it's that of the King James Bible, 
and you have to go home and get a King James Bible before you come back here, if they were told that water baptism doesn't amount to anything, baptism means immersed, it doesn't mean water, if they were told the Law and the Covenants have nothing to do with anybody today, Bill Hybels, as well as James McDonald, as well as Joyce Meyer, as well as Tony Evans, as well as Creeful Dollar, as well as Benny Hinn and all the rest of the nitwits, they would have, if they were lucky, 30 to 70 people coming to their so-called churches, not thousands. Because they would actually be preaching and teaching things correctly, which they are not. Right? Ephesians 4.16, even though I tell you the truth, have I become your enemy. And that is exactly what happens. People cannot handle God's truth because they have never been taught it. And like I said in my other messages, they've been trained one way, not taught. And this station, again, is dedicated to teaching and preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery and making all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. And that is why I work for a living and I have a ministry because that is the correct way to teach and preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Thanks again for listening as we continue to go through how to rightly divide the word of truth, you will find, again, like I've said in messages before, that most who claim to be Christians are not studying to show themselves approved unto God. Thanks again. And don't forget to check out my website at preachingthegospelthatsaves.com and to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again. Hi, I just wanted to make a correction. And when I heard it the first time, I thought, oh, that's wrong. Then when I heard it the second time, I thought, wow, what a bonehead. But the verse reference I gave you was Ephesians 4.16. It's actually Galatians 4.16. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Again, it is not Ephesians 4.16. It is Galatians 4.16. Thanks.